Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hey, Crafty Family, it's me. And by the title, I'm sure you have guessed that we are going to do a screw it and do it because we haven't done that in a long time. It's been a while. It's been a little while since we have done an actual screw it and do it. And some of you might not even know what the hell that is. If you don't, you're SOL because I ain't telling you. Just kidding. Screw it and do it is where you just take something small like this is part of a Rolodex and you do art on each piece. Um, but really it's not even about, you know, just filling this up. It has nothing to do with the Rolodex. It has to do with doing a small piece of art every day and finding the time no matter how busy your schedule is, to do a little something, something. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. It doesn't have to be a canvas or a journal page or cards or ATCs or anything, even though ATCs are small. But these are different because you don't have to be, you're not giving it to anybody else. So you don't have to make sure it's perfect. You just, you're just going to have fun. You know, even if you just feel like sitting there and you're like, oh, I want to be creative for like 10 minutes and I don't know what to do. Just take some old papers that you have lying around that you collage with and rip them up, glue them down to this, and then cut around it. And even if you did that to three or four of them one day, and then the next day you come back and you say, oh, well, now I'm going to take the collage piece and I'll add something to it or I'll make something out of it or I'll whatever, finish it up. I mean, you can work on it over several days, but it gets you moving. It gets you creating because, you know, everybody's busy. People got kids, they got jobs, they got Etsy stores, and they's busy. And then, but at the same time, you you could find ten minutes. You might not be able to find an hour or a half hour or even twenty minutes to do a whole journal page or something. But you can find like five or ten minutes to sit down and be like, let me plop some stuff on here. Even if you just sit and like throw some paint on three or four of them and then let them dry, and the next day you could do something else to them. You know, just do a little something to make your brain, like, relax because, you know, you're busy, you work, you know, everybody's busy and tired and, you know, not everybody's got time to do a full thing all the time, like a full page of something. This one feels like it's got gesso on it. I don't want the one with gesso on it. Why is it? I must have gessoed it for some reason. But the, I'm going to do a couple here. Um, what I'm going to do is lay them like this because what I'm going to do is grab some brushos and where are they? Where are my brushos? That's the first question of the day. Where are my brushos? There they are. I was going to say, where the heck are they? So I'm going to grab some colors of brusho. We got some purple. We got ultramarine. We got turquoise we got rose red we got what else um hold on a moment i don't want to bring out i don't want to bring out all of them so i'm just grabbing what i think will work I feel like I'm missing a color here. Right, we'll grab that one. And then we'll grab like a pink. And we'll grab a fuchsia. And we'll grab this orchid color. Not all of these are brushos. Some of them are um, color bursts. And others are cosmic shimmers. Now these... They don't give the burst of color the way these and these do, but what these do do is they give a metallic sheen, as in what I did in the live stream the other night. You can see the, the color, and then you can see the, because I did like a galaxy, and then you can see this metallic sheen on it in, in areas. Well, that's what they do. 
So it's a really nice combo to have these and either brushos or these or both. So these are a great kind of add-on to the to the you know to the art of powdered watercolor things. Okay, so let's see. I don't want any more color? All right, well, I'm just gonna mess around with these. I'm not looking to to you know do anything major or have it take forever to do or you know make a big deal out of it. You're gonna need your water. You're gonna need your water. Now the problem here is these like to buckle. So I don't know if this will work to be honest, but and I don't want to I don't want to glue it. I don't want to put it down on the um, I don't want to put it on the tape on the front. Now normally like on those cards I showed you a second ago, I put the tape around the edges, which is why they have a white edge. I don't want a white edge this time, but I also don't want them to buckle. So I'm going to attempt to do this and hope that they don't buckle since they're small. But the problem is the, the water is probably going to go right through the card and they're going to buckle anyway. <laughs> it's going to loosen the tape and it's going to, it's going to buckle anyway. But maybe, I don't know, maybe. Maybe, just maybe, I'm not going to be pessimistic about it. I'm going to be optimistic and say that the damn thing is going to work and everything's going to be happy and hunky-dory. I'm a pessimistic, optimistic person. I'm like an in-betweener. Okay, so we're going to spray water on these. And then we're going to sprinkle our color. All right, so we're going to sprinkle some colors. And you can see how the color bursts, right? And where it doesn't burst necessarily, I just need more... Uh, I need more water, which I'm going to add more water in a minute. So then we've got this, which these are kind of a pain in the ass because they come out weird and fast. And there's these. And then we're going to throw a little turquoise in the mix. And a little of this purple. What's this one? Let's just pull out. All right, and then we're going to all right. And now, before they have a chance to do anything, I'm going to start drying them a little bit. And this one's buckling anyway. water a little paper and blot up this area over here because it's just so dark it's purple it's a, it looks black but it's purple Now, there's a decent, really good amount of color on here. And so let's say, you know, I'm trying to knock the glare off, but I don't know how well that's going to happen. But anyway, let's say you want to add, you know, a little bit more color or something to them. Um, you can go back and do that. Um, 
And what's cool is, you know, let's say I want to add just a little bit of this in here. Um, maybe a little bit more of this in here. And then I want to add some of the little bit more red. And it's not really the point of adding more color necessarily as it is, you know, the water that we're going to add onto it. So if you don't want to add any more color, you don't have to add any more color, but how you get this really cool kind of muddled look is to take some water now and you're not going to saturate it the same way you did before. You're just going to trickle it on there just so it hits some of that color and makes it burst. And then you're going to start to dry it and then you're going to pat it so that you get like these spots. So you're going to start to dry it. And then you can kind of go in and blot it up and you get like this cool effect from the water sitting on there. You get like a more spotted effect. I don't know if you could tell. Let me see if I can pull this off here. You get like a little bit more of a spotty effect and it looks really cool. So, ooh. That's not nice at all. That's ripping my card. Well, that might have been a bad idea. Okay, well, we're just going to have to put that into consideration. And not do that. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to dry these. And I'm not editing anything, so bear with the fact that you're going to have to listen to my dryer. <laughs> Okay, so now with the tape situation, we are just going to cut the tape off and then leave that piece back there because I tried to rip it off the other one and it like, instead of just ripping off, it like was ripping the my little card because these aren't watercolor paper. So, you know, generally when you use brush shows, you use watercolor paper because it's powdered watercolor. So you want to use watercolor paper generally but we're going to use these because you can use these you just got to be conscious of the fact that they aren't watercolor paper so they're going to be thinner and less you know watercolor paper of course will turn out better but this is just to get some cool coloring down now i noticed that i have a lot of color left on this table you can't maybe see all of it but there is some, and I've got another card here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate it with the water and then I'm going to go and I'm going to pick it up because why not make another background? Who, you know, who says we can't? Even if it's a light background, at least it's a little something. It's something, all right. There we go. And now we're going to clean it up. Okay. So those are some cool backgrounds that I have for Screw It and Do It. Now you could stop here. You know what I mean? It's been about 10 minutes. I could do that. Okay, that was fun. And now if that's all the time I have, I could stop here, put these away. And then tomorrow... When I have 10 more minutes, I could come and I can now 
do something on here, whether it's doodle with, with uh, paint markers or add a sentiment and leave it at that or just, you know, mess around with it some more. It's up to you. Um, I am going to do a couple of more because I want, um, I want a really light background with like a yellow color. So I think what I'm going to do, because there's something I want to try, and I think what I'm going to do is, let's see if I can find a yellow. Where the heck is my lemon yellow? Is this it? All right, here's just yellow. I just want to add some yellow to this and I don't feel like using regular watercolors. So I'm just going to do this and then spread it around a bit. Cause I just want a yellow background. I just want a light background because I'm going to draw on top of it. So that's all I want to do. So let that dry a second. And then I'm going to get another light color, like here's uh, leaf green. Uh, I think this is a light color. We're going to do this, and well, it's kind of a light color. And we'll add a little bit of the, let's see, what other light color do I have? Lemon. You can add some of the lemon in. And have that be a color and that be a background too. There we go. That's another background. I don't like those dark spots. Sometimes the powder is dark. Okay. Let me just see if I can find one more for a light color. I thought I had like a lime green. I do. I have a lime green. I could try that. I mean, you're not wasting anything. You don't need, like I said, you don't need this Rolodex. You could just use index cards and even cut index cards in half. So don't think, oh, I have to go find one of those Rolodex things because um, ugh, you're not likely going to find one. It's funny because this is like the leaf green. It's not much different. Well, it's a little different than the leaf green, but not by much. Yeah, it's a little different. Actually, this looks more leaf green. That looks more lime green. Figure that out. That's weird. All right, so it's another light background. And that's what I want. Light backgrounds for those. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to do everything I want to do with all of these right now. But I have them done. And we're 15 minutes in. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight backgrounds done. So half the work is done for me if I decided to stop right now and to pick this back up tomorrow, right? So this is what I mean. That's the point of of doing the screw it and do it because it's like just screw it, sit down and do something. You don't have to do anything major or pressure yourself or make it seem like you have to finish things because that's what ends up. That's what happened to me anyway, and I and other people have said that this happens to them too where they're like, oh, I don't have time to sit down and get everything out for that. And I don't have, to, you know, so just screw it. I'm not going to do that, you know, whatever. And then, but really, if you get yourself in the mindset that you don't have to sit down and do an entire journal page or do an entire anything, that you could just sit down for 10 minutes and do a half of something or a tiny something, you know, a little card, a little tiny card that's, you know, what, two and a half inches, two inches by like three and a half inches or five, four inches, whatever that is. I don't know what the hell it is. I can't measure. I can't. Um, but that's all you need to do. Just something like that. And you don't even have to finish it. You can start it and then finish it later. Don't be afraid to not finish something. That's, I think the thing that a lot of people fear is like when they sit down to start something, they feel like they have to finish it right then and there. And that's not the case. You can always stop and say, okay, I don't have time right now and pick it up the next day. And you'll also have a new, you'll have had time to A, you know, think about what you might want to do with it. 
you know, because like, you know, let's say you, you, you get to this point, you're like, I'm going to leave this for tomorrow. Well, you'll have all day tomorrow or all day tonight or whatever and before you have to come back to it. So you can like think about, oh, that would be cool. You could sit and actually ponder about it. Whereas if you did it right away, you might get yourself flustered because you don't know what to do. So it's kind of nice sometimes to do one part and then finish the other part later you know, and, and take the time to think about what you're going to do. Ah, sippy, sippy. So I'm going to dry these. And then after I dry them, we're going to do something fun. And I'll zoom you in a little bit for that too. In fact, while I'm drying these, I will get the zoom going. There we go. All right, sorry for the drying. They're nice and pretty much all dry. I also want to show you real quick, okay? So let's say you find one of these. Well, first of all, if you don't have a Rolodex, please don't think you can't do this because you don't have a Rolodex. The Rolodex, like I said, is insignificant. It, this isn't about whether you have a Rolodex or doing it on a Rolodex. This is about just doing something. So don't be like, oh, well, I can't find one of those. I don't have one of those. So I guess I can't do this. You know, no, this isn't about that. I only happen to have this because they had one at the Creative Reuse and I thought the size was nice and small and perfect for this. But if you don't have that, please don't let that stop you from doing it. You can get creative and take some index cards and cut them in half. Or like if you get the bigger index cards, you can cut them in half and you could poke a hole, punch a hole through it and put a ring on it. And I did that and I can't find the one I have. It's somewhere around here. I made one of them and you can use it like a little screw it and do it journal. And you could do it that way. You do not have to have a Rolodex. That is completely not the point of this. The point is just something small to work on. And this just happened to be small. But with that said, if you do happen to find one of these Rolodexes in a thrift store or whatever, and you want to do this, and let's say it doesn't have any of these cards in it, or it only has like a couple of the cards in it, I'm going to show you real quick how to make them, okay? So you could take, if it does have one, and usually they have one, and if not, you can find the dimensions of them. Just look up, you know, your Rolodex. If you have one, it'll say Rolodex. You can find online what size they are if they don't have anything in them. Like most of them at least have these little things in and you can go by this. You know, they have the little uh, dividers. So usually they have something in them to that, you know, you can use to base your measurements off of. But all you got to do is take one, right? And put it here like that and I'll show you how to make it with the holes and everything or the little notches it's very very easy this is a little crusty around the edges because and then you just cut it and you can make a whole bunch of these at once and you know just get out your cutter and know the measurements and then just cut them you know cut a bunch of them because you can get two in an eight and a half by eleven so you could just cut it to size i'm just doing the one to show you and then you can round the edges to make it look you know just like it and then as far as these holes go all you have to do 
is just trace around the big part of this hole and then the little stem part at the bottom that you know the little you know part here just trace around one of them and then take a hole punch a regular round hole punch and punch in the center okay and then take tiny little scissors where am mine little scissors big scissors or two and just cut boop boop like a keyhole it'll look like a keyhole and guess what mine is full but it fits right down in to your thing and there you go it's in there see it fits right in there it does not have to be exactly like the ones that come with it you can make your own and it'll work exactly the same. Now this is a thinner cardstock because it was just a scrap piece. It's not really a good cardstock. It's a very flimsy cardstock. So I would use a little bit better cardstock. Just use our standard white cardstock. This wasn't exactly cardstock. But yeah, any kind of cardstock or chipboard. You can do it with chipboard as well. You can make your pieces thicker. Um, so that's kind of up to you. But yeah, you totally make your own if you don't have papers to go in yours. You could probably line up several of them after you cut them all out and then punch, 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 cut, cut, cut. Do the next pile, punch, punch, cut, cut real fast. It's not hard because all you have to do is line up the first one that has the marks on it. You mark the first one, you know what I mean? Like, let's say this doesn't have marks, okay? And you sit here and you mark, you mark, and then you take the marked one and you lay it with the rest and you punch, punch. You know what I'm saying? You can have like a little assembly line. You could do a lot of them very quickly because I've done it. So it's not hard. So that's just a way to make the papers that you need if you've come across a Rolodex and you're like, well, I want to, you know, make the papers. Now I'm going to use, hopefully they work, because um, I haven't used them in a while. And I want to use some of these Diane Reevely pens to make some little mandalas on mine. So I might only just do one, but... The point is not how many you do of something. The point is just have fun. So I'm trying to think of what color I want to make the actual mandal. Do I want to do black? Maybe I'll do black. Here's the black. Maybe I'll draw it in black and then color it in with the other colors. All right, I need a piece of scratch paper. I'll use this one. I haven't used these in a little quick minute. So in order to make a mandala, you can do like, a, it doesn't have to be centered. It's going to go off the page, whatever. We're just playing. So I'm just going to make, start it out with like a flower, right? It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be handmade. And then I'm going to do like this. We're just going to play, pretend we know what we're doing. Right? And then we can go in between like this. And then we can do, I'm going to do a circle around that. And then I'm going to do um, another circle. And then I'm going to do circles. inside that's why I wanted to do a light colored background so that not just my black marker would show up but my light markers would show up and then I'm going to do a 
See, and this is where some of them are going to go off the page, but it's okay. And these are like not obviously proportioned and not like measured out and perfect and that's not the point. I'm just doodling to doodle and I'm not even good at doodling or anything. So maybe I'll leave that one like that. It kind of looks more like a flower than a mandala, but that's okay. And then I'll do like a little one over here and I'll start with like a circle. And then I'll do, maybe this time I'll do little, like that. And then I'll connect to that. And then let's see. I'm not very good at drawing, but I don't care because it's not really about, you know, perfection and making everything great. It's just having fun and being creative and practice. This is also like a way to practice things. So there's another one and then we can do another one here and this one can be whoops I screwed that up oh I screwed it up that's all right because you know what we can do color this in and make it something different who cares? Right? The first layer of this will be black. That's all. And then we can continue and then add color it in with other colors. And they're just like little doodle designs. They're you know not necessarily even mandalas, just whatever. Just any kind of doodle you want to doodle. I'm not good at drawing, I'm not good at doodling, so <laughs> but you know, sometimes it's just fun to do and play. And like I said, these are not I mean they're I'm obviously you're seeing mine, but they're not you know, yours, you know, unless you do them on video, yours are just for you. You know what I mean? They're just for you to, to do and have fun. So this is good for now. I'm just, obviously this is a small paper, so I'm just doing small things and I'm just playing around. So then I've got, you know, colors and if I mix some of these up, then we can go in and color our mandalas. which is the fun part. Let me get rid of that in my way. I haven't used these in a, a week or two, so of course they're... This one I have to be careful with because for some reason this one likes to leak. Let's start with this one. Okay, so I'll start with this little one over here and we can color in a 
this is my favorite part is coloring them in and I should have my glasses on to be honest problem is I don't know what I did with my glasses hmm I have to get the ones off my desk hold on one second Okay, sorry. I had to get the other ones off my desk because I couldn't find, and I took off my sweater too because now I'm getting hot. But it's fun to do these little things. Like I said, you could could have done the backgrounds one day. You could, if you're doing more than one piece with the mandalas, you could draw all your mandalas the next day, and then the next day you can color them. Do you know what I mean? So you could break it up into three sessions and there you did something constructive with, you know, with the little bit of time that you might have. Sometimes they take so take a little coaxing to get them to allow me to use them. These aren't my best glasses. I could tell these are a little weak. Better than nothing though. But my eyes are still having trouble focusing. I have stronger ones, but I lost them. They're around here somewhere. I'm even going to do the center one. That, and then, let's see, that's that one. And we can do... This color. And we could do pink. And then we could do blue. There we go. Can you guys see okay? Do I need to come in anymore? Maybe I can come in a little bit. Let's see. Well, let me without getting too weird. I don't know if it'll focus very well. I don't know. All right. Well, We'll give it a try. Hopefully that is okay. And 
do this lime green color. relaxing you can do you know not every day has to be you know crafting to the maximum capacity and doing a big project in order to feel because I know that lately I've had like a lot of issues getting motivated which is why there's not many videos on my channel because even I've been doing live streams but live streams is just like I, you know, that was my excuse to get some crafting done because I've been really busy and I've also kind of lost a lot of my mojo lately. So I feel like I haven't been doing as much as normal. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm just having like some issues. So this is a good way for like, if you feel that way where you're just not feeling up to like, you know, oh, I don't know what to do because I don't feel up to doing anything. This is a great way to not commit to anything major, just to commit yourself to a few minutes, you know? And everybody can commit to a few minutes. It doesn't mean, you know, you don't have to, like... I think I'm going to use the white and go in between where the turquoise is, but I think I may need to dry the turquoise. Hold on. Turquoise, teal, whatever that is, because they're circles, so... time with this one because this one leaks I don't get it like what the hell man why is this leaking some of these leak weird and I don't know if I appreciate them very much Like this one's just leaking. Rather than the color going into the tip, it's like leaking around it. Yeah, this one's not good. I wonder if I can call Ranger and see if they'll replace it. Because all that one does is leak. It's like useless. Alright, well, so much for that one. Anyway, I waste time on that. I love these pens, but they are they have some flaws to them. I mean, they're great, but they're also... They've also got some issues. every time you use them it's like the first time you have to sit here and prime them all which is kind of a pain in the butt but I mean if they worked perfectly that would be fine but they don't work perfectly I have like two of them that likes to leak and so I'm gonna have to get a hold of Ranger about that but they are fun to play with I'll tell you that Aside from their design flaw. 
especially that white one, which makes me angry because out of all of them, that one, you know, I want the work, I want that one to work the most. And once they work, they work great. Whoops, you can't see. I might have to move the camera back. That's why I don't zoom in very often because I'm not good at staying on camera. Because once I start doing something, it's hard for me to look up and then look back down and to make sure I'm on camera because it hurts my eyes to have to go back and forth. So I try to keep my eyes on what I'm doing, which is also why, like, sometimes people are like, oh, I'm ignoring them in the chat when I'm in a live stream. But sometimes when I'm working on something, it's, it's hard for me to look up and then go right back to what I was doing. You know, it, it gets to be difficult because it, my eyes aren't, you know, they don't like to focus on things easily. And it takes a lot to get them to focus. And then when I when I divert them away for to look up at something completely different, I feel like it kind of it takes me a minute to like refocus them back where I need to focus them. But you know, what you gonna do? These pens are fun though. When they worked, they're fun. But it's just fun to sit down. It's relaxing to sit down and just be like, you know, to work on whatever it's kind of it's definitely got it's therapeutic you know it's definitely therapeutic even if you don't necessarily create a masterpiece you don't have to all the time you know you really don't and that's the thing like it's not like any of us are selling our art to the Smithsonian's. I say this all the time, but it's the truth, and we need to get it through our head. We're not like nine times nine times out of ten, you know, we're not fine artists. We're just playing. This is our hobby. This isn't our job. We're not like, you know, sure, some of us try to sell things on Etsy, but you're not selling everything on Etsy that you make. You're, you know, you still have to make stuff for just the fun of it, you know. But for the majority of us, we are just artists that like to have fun. You know what I mean? We're just hobbyists. This is just our hobby. So not everything you do has to be this ridiculously perfect piece of art. And even if you're going to give it to somebody, it still doesn't have to be something you stress over. It just has to be something that you enjoyed making and the other person is going to love it because you enjoyed making it and you put your heart into it without like being all stressed out and crazy and you know getting yourself all worked up over it you don't need to do that you know i think too much we 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 turn our hobby into something so serious and it's not something serious you know let it be okay just to create something and not, not it, you know, not have it have a meaning, not, not have it have, you know, be perfect, not even strive for perfection, not even try to make it perfect, just for the sake of having fun. I mean, these look probably like crap, but I don't care. I really don't care. 
I just am enjoying sitting here and doing it. And whether they come out perfect or not, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It's still something I did. And it's still fun. And I still enjoyed myself. You know, so who cares? And that's kind of how you got to look at it. You know, and I'm probably not going to finish these today, but I did this one. I like it. I'm happy with it. I think it looks cute and I don't care if it's perfect. You know, not everything has to be this, you know, perfect, you know, bout of perfection in order to be right. You know what I mean? Like there is no right and wrong, especially if we're just doing this as our hobby and just having fun. The whole point is it's a hobby. A hobby isn't something that you're supposed to, you know, you're not making millions of dollars off of it. You know what I mean? So don't stress out so much. Let it, let it just happen. And you know, you don't have to, you're not proving anything to anybody. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. You don't even have to prove anything to yourself. The best thing you could prove to yourself is that you don't take everything so seriously. That's the best thing you could prove, you know, if you have to prove something to somebody somewhere, you know, but you don't have to prove anything to anybody else. And if you decide, if I decided to send this to somebody, I know that they would be like, oh, that's cool. You know what I mean? They're not going to be like, you know, no, they're not going to be able to walk up to a fine art gallery and submit it and get money for it but that's not why we do this we do this for fun so everybody who gets themselves worked into a tizzy over everything they do you need to just step back and realize it's just a hobby and it's just for fun and it's supposed to be relaxing it's supposed to be something you enjoy not something that you stress out over and i can't stress that enough because so many people, I just, they get so overstressed that sometimes they don't even do anything. They end up not doing any art because they stress so much over something, you know, over, over the point of doing it. So that's why things like mixed media mashup on Wednesday nights, it's a great way. And if you don't know what that is, by the way, it's a live stream where we pick cards and on each card it has a prompt and we do the prompt that's on the card. So you know, it doesn't matter. Your, your, your thing might come out looking like crap because we're just going to put a whole bunch of random stuff on it, but it's not about that. It's about, it's about having fun. And it'll also teach you to kind of chill out because some people just get so worked up over what they're putting down and that's not what it's for. So if, you know, if you or somebody, you know, is like that and either a, you don't know how to start on a blank piece of paper and you don't know what to do. B, you like mixed media, but you don't know where to start and you're a beginner. Or C, you have a tendency to be too much of a perfectionist. Then you need to come on Wednesday nights and be in our class. It's free. It's a live stream. It's on my channel. It's usually around 9 o'clock, sometimes 9.30 on Wednesday nights. There's a link in the description to my Facebook group. If you go to the description down below and where it says show more, click on that. It'll open up all the links. You can find links to my Patreon, which we do classes, all kinds of stuff in there. And that's a paid thing. So I don't want anybody to think that that's free. It's paid, but the minimum is $5 a month. You can go all the way up to $100 a month if you want to. But the minimum is $5 a month. And, you know, there's access to a uh, private Facebook group where we do swaps and giveaways and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. But if you just want to join in on the Mixed Media Mashup, that's free. It's every Wednesday. You just come to my channel Wednesday nights. And if you're in my Facebook group, I announce it every Wednesday night. Um, if you have the notification bell clicked on my channel and you're subscribed, you'll, you should get a notification about going live. For that class but i i advise you to come check it out and work along with us because we also do a giveaway for those who do work along with us you get it you, you know you could win a prize i mean it you know i couldn't you know find an, any other way to motivate you know i'm doing every i do everything i can to try to motivate everybody to try it because it's so important especially if you're a beginner to mixed media or you're somebody who really has a hard time letting go of the perfection of everything definitely come check this out because it it definitely helps i mean you can ask anybody in the chat you could just come and watch 
and see if you want to participate the next time. Or you can go back and rewatch the live stream and participate along with us. Um, but I advise you to check it out because it, it's definitely helpful. You're going to find it to be helpful in just letting go. And that's a big thing for a lot of people is a lot of times the joy has been sucked out of doing your arts and crafts because you've spent every time you sit down to do something, you make it into a big ordeal and you get yourself stressed out. Either you'll, you know, get everything out and you, that you think you need. And then by the time you get everything out, you're like, you know, you, you kind of convinced yourself not to do it for whatever reason that day. Or when you do sit down, you know, you start doing it. And if one little thing goes wrong, you flip out and you give up and you walk away or whatever, or you throw it away. And, you know, I can't stress enough how that is so toxic for your creativity. And if you do the mixed media mashup, it kind of helps you let go. And it helps you realize that it's not the end of the world. Not, not everything has to be perfect. And sometimes perfection, you know, is toxic. And sometimes you might end up with something beautiful if you keep going, even when you think things are going wrong. So I would check that out. I try to do everything I can, like these screw it and do it, because I my like I feel like I want to see people not giving up and also finding the time and you know because some people will start and start doing art and then they'll get busy and they'll kind of set it aside and they won't do it anymore for a while and I want to see more people you know kind of realize that it doesn't take much time and that you can do things without it taking forever and anything you know creative is better than nothing at all so even if you just do a few minutes a day so next time you have a few minutes just say screw it i'm gonna do it and just do it and just sit down at your art desk and pick up anything for freaking 10 minutes you know pick a little piece of paper and even if you sit there and doodle or you take out your mod podge and some scraps you have lying around and mod podge them down and then let it sit it'll motivate you to think well, what you could do with this stuff for the next day. And then you'll be excited to come back the next day and work on it some more. And then maybe the next day, and maybe it'll get the ball rolling a little bit, you know, or if you've been, you know, kind of in a funk or a little depressed, it might help. You know, I know obviously depression, I'm sure just doing some art doesn't always help, but sometimes it does, you know. So sometimes sitting down and doing a little something every day for 10 minutes might start sparking some interest back in what you love because I know some people get depressed and they set it aside and they don't do art because they're not feeling up to it or not they're feeling depressed and sometimes you just need to kickstart that creativity and force yourself to kickstart it in order to get back on the back on the horse you know but you know whatever you can do to to be creative is always important so anyway I've rambled long enough I hope you enjoyed this I hope you'll give it a try and I will talk to you guys later. If you're not subscribed, subscribe, please. And give this video a thumb thumbs up if you liked it. And um, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week. And I will see you guys Wednesday night. Don't forget, Wednesday night at 9 o'clock for Mixed Media Mashup. And I will talk to you later. Uh, make sure you do what you love and love what you do. And be nice to people. Bye. Mm -hmm.